One of the really additional key aspects of the vision for space exploration is the providing opportunities for international partnerships. We're not going to maintain a, uh, basically the moon is the first step in our settling the solar system without being truly international. Clearly, uh, there's a lot of money that's required, a lot of efforts, uh, and I would think that the private uh, sector developments, uh, particularly that might provide uh, uh, fundamental utilities, uh, is, a, is a good candidate for an early international effort. Uh, moreover, of course, if it's fully privately funded, we don't get into a lot of the, the same issues you do about who's launch vehicle and what the, a lot of the, the, the legal niceties that, uh, that, that tend to hamper some, uh, some government uh, cooperations. So I'm very optimistic that, that the, the international aspect, particularly as it relates to private sector development of the moon, could be very, very promising. Young people are the key to making space exploration work and to really achieve the, uh, the objectives and, and the promise that has been set out. Um, but it's important to understand uh, that, that space is hard. Uh, working on the frontier is hard and it can be dangerous. Uh, it requires uh, a commitment and it requires a, a willingness to work hard at uh, science and technology above all else. So I think the first thing that, that people need to understand as they go into these areas is that Everything worth doing, and clearly expanding in the solar system is one of the most fundamental things worth doing, is going to require a lot of hard work and a lot of commitment, but the rewards one achieves uh, are really worth it. I think probably the greatest thing for, in, in my life is, is uh, when a, one of the, a mission that you've been involved with launches, or new data comes in, or something new is done, that's worth all of that, uh, that, that sweat and tears. Uh, so you're in for a hard, uh, a hard career, but the, the rewards are, are very much worth it. To students and young people everywhere, everything is possible. I got into space uh, largely because I wanted to go to the moon. Uh, I haven't been there yet uh, other than uh, virtually uh, with the Clementine probe and uh, uh, I, I, the future is unlimited and it's, uh, uh, the moon is obviously the, the, the first really significant step. Uh, uh, a little over a decade from now, I think we're going to begin to see permanent uh, occupation off the planet, so I can't imagine a more exciting time to be alive. A key aspect of, of any exploration program is to do as much as you can on Earth and as affordably as possible. Uh, analogs, uh, lunar analogs, could be a very, very key part of that, and we're just beginning to look at that, but uh, they've been used very successfully for Mars, uh, uh, Mars studies, and I think they could be used even more successfully for lunar studies. Reminding everyone in Apollo there was significant uh, analog activity. Uh, I would see that there's uh, possibilities uh, uh, in many different areas. Uh, one that uh, we at NASA have actually begun to look at is the use of, uh, of some of the uh, volcanic regions uh, near Mauna Kea on the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, there's a perfect place to do a lot of analogs. Uh, one of the possibilities there is to look at uh, using uh, uh, the, the volcanic ash, which has a lot of similarities to, uh, to lunar regolith, uh, to look at in-situ resource utilization. So I see a lot of very interesting possibilities of analogs uh, as being a low cost and, and very significant way to, to do real lunar exploration here in the next few years.